he passed by me. how this goes down. Yep. Here's the situation today, people. I am in California, near LA. Actually, about 50 miles from downtown LA, so no, not LA. The issue is, is I didn't know, and no one told me, that I could park at this location. There was nothing on our Qualcomm that says overnight parking okay or anything like that. I could have left from Las Vegas, Nevada and got here and slept here overnight and had a fresh clock by the time they got me loaded and took off and went to Phoenix to relay this load. But I didn't know that. No one, no one told me that. So am I gonna run the risk of getting here and then my hours be up and then I can't park anywhere? You know, am I gonna run that risk and then end up parking overnight in an area that, you know, no trucks allowed or something? No, I'm not gonna risk that. I've never been here before. So I ended up shutting down before I even got into LA. And I got up this morning thinking that there was gonna be insane amount of traffic. And it's taken them a very long time to load my trailer. Sorry about the the lighting. It's taken them a very long time to load the trailer. So my 14 hour is about to catch up and start counting down on my eight. And I need at least six hours to get to Phoenix, Arizona. Plus I need about another half an hour to go so I can scale the truck out and weigh it. It's a pain in the ass. It better not be overweight because if it's not overweight, I'm not gonna make it to Phoenix. This fucking sucks. Um, anyways, hopefully they get me loaded. Hopefully it's not overweight. Let's just hope everything works in the benefit of myself, but I want to show you what I had to do this morning. I'm down this street and back my truck right here, okay? Now, the issue is, this is at such an angle that those are made out of rubber, so it's not a problem hitting this on anything. But you could see my landing gear is all the way on the ground. And I have my back wheels up on blocks. I had to put my wheels up on the blocks just so these weren't hitting the ground when I was normal, you know. But this is even on the ground, or up off the ground, and these are now weighted down and that's hitting the ground. So it's going to be fun getting out of here to say the least. And my tandems are slid all the way to the back. all the way so they can get up there so yeah that's that situation 
get to think outside of the box. I told them that I have an hour and a half maximum. And they need to get me out of here if it's going to make it on time. The thing that sucks is when you're in LA, you got to account for traffic and stuff like that. And when you don't account for traffic, you get stuck in it. When you account for traffic, there's no traffic. So then you're there too early and it's just a pain in the ass. So either way, let's hope I get this to Phoenix. I'm gonna spend the night in Phoenix. I'm not gonna have any hours to get home. And I'll be home tomorrow, I think, for Christmas. We'll figure it out, we'll see what happens. So check it out. The load was overweight. By a lot. The first time that I went and weighed it, which I knew it was going to be overweight, but the dumb dumbs didn't want to listen to me. Well, they're not dumb dumbs, but they didn't want to listen to me. I tried to tell them and whatever. So, in California, we all know, drivers know, uh, the two of you that are watching this video are drivers. Uh, maybe three if uh, Love and Truckin's watching this. That would be cool. We all know the California state law. You gotta have your tandems at the 40 mark and you can't go any further back. And that means if you're overweight on those tandems and you're at the 40 mark, you can't fix it. It's just, you can't. You cannot go further back. I tried to explain to the people that were loading the truck, very nice people, we got along great, but I tried to explain to them they can't put a forklift on the very ass end of my trailer because it would be overweight. And the guy sit there and he says, well, I've been doing this for 15 years and and this, that, and the other thing. And I'm like, okay, um, I understand you might be doing this for 15 years, but are you a commercial driver? Are you a professional driver? Do you have a license? Have you gone through the school? Have you been taught how to drive like we've been taught? Well, no. Was, well, then expect me to be coming back. Well, I don't think you're going to need to come back, he says. So, all right, that's fine. You know, just do what you got to do, man. And if you're wrong, whatever. So I got his phone number, and I told him I'd give him a call either way. I went to the closest cat scale and had to pay out of pocket because it wasn't a pilot or a flying J. It wasn't our fuel directory. And it was overweight. This was the first ticket. So here's the weight. I was 11,500 on the front, 28,200 on the drives, and 36,660 on the tandems. I was a total of 76,360. When I came back and showed this guy this, he goes, well, you're, you can you can be 80,000 pounds. I said, yeah, it doesn't matter if it's 80,000 pounds or not. If I'm over 34,000 on either one of these two, I can't haul it. And I can't move this back because it's already the furthest back legally that I can go. So they took the forklift off. And it fixed the problem. This is the second scale ticket. 11,520, 29,740, 27,760. Do you think I moved those tandems at all? I did not. I left them alone and I drove out of California that way. So they fixed it. But by the time they fixed it, I didn't have the hours to go anywhere. I stayed the night at that, it's like an Arco gas station. There's a jack-in-a-box across the street. It's in Paris, California. And I had to get up this morning at 2.30 in the morning to get this load in here in the drop yard in Phoenix so the driver can take it from here to Springfield, Missouri. And I have been sitting here since. They have me on a load that picks up here 
And the trailer's here. It's sitting right over there. But I can't deliver it until 1 o'clock tomorrow. I've already been here for 10 hours. And by the time it delivers, I'm going to be about 30 hours waiting. Not enough to get a 34-hour restart, but it doesn't matter because I'm going home tomorrow. And I'll be home for about a week, seven days. If I go home tomorrow, tomorrow is the 20th. My days won't start until the 21st. So the 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, Christmas Day, the 26th is plans with my family, and I'm going back out on the 27th. So I'll be home tomorrow. And, yeah, it's going to be great. So that's the shit that happened. Uh, I'm, You know, this is totally the next day. I've already made the trip from California, you know. So sorry about the skip of, and there's no video montage or anything like that. Oh, and if, this is for, um, this is for Loving Truckin'. Loving trucking. I don't know your guys' names yet. I just started watching your guys' videos. And I like them. And I hope you guys like some of my things too. Um, some of my video montages. I haven't been able to get around to them. But I saw in one of your videos that you were complaining about the light. Well, you weren't really complaining about the light. You were saying, sorry about the light, but this is the best I can do. Well, I don't know if you could tell, but it is nighttime here. And... I might have a solution for you. Um, you can see this cord here. Well, this is the light I think that you had going on in your truck. This was like, I don't know, maybe not. Your lighting was a little bit better than that. However, if you would like, I will show you my solution to the lighting issue that I had when I have at nighttime. I'll show you what I made. I have an extension cord going into the bunk, into the inverter, which I know your guys' new truck, the inverter's back here, so it might be even easier for you. But all I have is this very cheaply made clamp light, okay? This light is for an iguana cage. They make these. These are small. It's not the big, big ones that, you know, the industrial size ones. This is for an iguana cage. You can buy them in like a PetSmart or something. And all I did is I took an old ripped shirt, like a white one, and I stretched it over this and put a, uh, a filament bulb in there. Um, actually, um, one of the, the spirally bulbs. And I just taped it around the edge, the tape and the, uh, the shirt. Because what that does is, even though it looks harsh right here, oh, that's my son. <laughs> when it's on you, it's not as harsh. It's The light spreads a lot more. It actually spreads so much, it's lighting up my whole cabin of my truck. So, so anyways, that's for you guys. Um, if you, if you want to make one of those it's very cheap i did that one for free because i had it laying around in my house and <sighs> yeah so an old white like fruit of the loom t-shirt take it cut a about a hole like a circle about uh i would say about four inches or five inches wider than the circle that you're putting it over and then sh like tape it on one side and then stretch it and then tape it on the other side. And what that's going to do is it stretches the fibers out and the light hits it and it spreads out. And it's actually just a very, very small, cheap um, video blog filter light. So I hope that helps you. And um, I'll be home for Christmas and I'll, there'll be, I will make videos. Like I have a lot of freaking footage. So much footage and I gotta make. Uh, I have a video of this chick 
that cut me off and I almost crashed. And if I wouldn't, if I, if I hadn't predicted what she was going to do, I would have wrecked. So let's put it that way. Um, that'll be coming up. That's going to be the next video I put up. I'll probably do that in a few days. So, um, I already have the videos on my laptop. I just got to find the time to do it. I could have done it tonight, but you know what? I'm tired and I don't want to do it. And I got to make this video. So whatever. Um, guys, be safe out there. It's snowing up north. And if you're up there, drive safe. Shut down if you have to. Don't let your ego get ahead of you. Um, you know, yeah, we got to make that money. But you know what? There's no, no dollar bill is worth our lives. And um, if you got to shut down, just do it. Don't don't be one of those messages we get on the Qualcomm saying, you know, that this person screwed up because they didn't shut down to, you know, bad weather. I mean, I shut down in windy weather, 60 degrees, 60 degrees, 60 mile an hour gusts of wind in Tucum Carry, New Mexico, three days ago, four days ago. And I was heavy, but it was still blowing me all around. And because I was getting blown around, nope, no go, no bueno. So I shut down due to high winds. There was other drivers that came in through there with our from our company. Came in, fueled up, left, came in, fueled and left. But you know what? I didn't take the chance. And there was two trucks that I know of that were uh, pushed off the side of the road. They needed to be towed out uh, when I was taken off the next morning. So um, anyways, be safe, guys. And um, I'll see you guys on uh, the next video. Like, share this video. Get it out there. And if you have any questions, leave comments down below. I'll like, I'll answer them. Check out my other videos. I have tons of videos still that need to be watched. And check them out. Watch them. Like them. And or don't. I don't care. Whatever. But until then, guys, I'm going to go to bed. Rob Realistic is out. Oh, and before I'm out, you guys know what company I drive for. If you ever see me, it says Rob Realistic right on the side of the truck. Right on the door, it says Rob Realistic, Tucson, Arizona. You ever see that truck? It's me. Rob Realistic is out.